Our second job for my neighbour is one of these portable RCD power boxes as builders use. Uh, home handyman etc. Electro safe power centre from HBM. Uh, it's got an earth leakage circuit breaker, normal circuit breaker and two double power points in it. Uh, rated at 10 amps by the look of it. Uh, supposedly just no power comes through this so this should be a nice simple test that's already been pulled apart which helps. Interestingly this has a relay in it as well as the circuit breakers so I'm not sure what that's about. Uh, but I guess we're about to find out. So for this we'll need a multimeter, set it to continuity, wakey wakey Mr. Fluke. I've got a beep test here so diode test makes it a lot easier. So this is an Australian plug, this should be active over here, which is always the top left on the power point, active earth in the middle and the bottom, neutral on the other side. So we've got no active through to our power point. We do have active to our breaker. Earth leakage breaker here which is switched on. So the active comes out of that, so that's fine. That then goes to this breaker, which then comes over to this relay. And we have active all the way to this, oh yeah, the relay looks a bit cooked on the coil now that I see it. So we've got a relay active and neutral. And it looks like they're connected to the coil. I'm guessing that's the coil, yeah, coil connection in the relay. So it looks like the active and the coil is soldered to the one of the switch positions. And same on the neutral side. So whenever there's power on this unit, uh, we've got active and neutral. This is obviously a 240-volt coil relay, which should tell us on the top here. Cleon 10 amp 240 volt AC slash 28 volts DC. I oh, know that might be the the rating of the contacts. So maybe it's like 10 amps at 240 volt AC or 10 amps at 28 volt DC. 240 volt AC. I'm not quite sure what that means. Oh yeah, I can see AC220 volts on the coil. So for some reason they've got out of our our active comes up the lead through the two circuit breakers, as you'd expect. Same with the neutral by the look of it. I guess we should check our neutral. And that then goes through the breakers and that should come to this relay as well. So, so they've wired it so that when 240 volts comes in and goes via the breakers, they haven't been turned off. It goes to the coil of the relay which and two of the contacts, which makes the relay switch on. Uh, yeah, which then closes the contacts and then outputs obviously a voltage to our power points, which without any voltage on it, that's doing nothing. Now the interesting thing is whether we've got resistance across this coil, which we don't seem to, because it does look fairly cooked. So why on earth they're using that? I would just assume that it would come in and go via the two circuit breakers straight to the um, straight to the outlets. Thirty milliamp rated residual current. That'd be the circuit, the RCD residual current device, circuit breaker, earth leakage, whatever you want to call it. Compliance with layers, portable socket outlet assembly. Suitable for construction sites. The interesting thing is, why does it have that relay? Do not operate unless cord is fully unreeled. Press the RCD test button to check it before it's use. Total must not exceed 2410 amps. So we have a... Yeah, it looks like a C10 10 amp circuit breaker. So we've got circuit breaker protection for overcurrent. We've got circuit breaker protection for earth leakage current. So that protects you against electrocution or faulty equipment that's leaking to earth, wet equipment, etc. So why it actually has a relay as well, I have no idea. 
I might have to do some research into that. Yeah, the contacts are looking. Oh, yeah, the contacts are fried, so it seems to be open circuit. Let's just check that coil again. There might be, uh, there might be some resistance there, so we might be lucky. Mm, 12k seems awfully high for a a relay coil. I mean, it is a 240 volt one, but I doubt it would be measuring anything like that high. But I can see the contacts on the neutral side here are completely fried. It's actually melted the case. The case is about to come on. There you go, it comes off. Uh, they're well and truly fried. The coil does look a bit brown, but that doesn't mean it's faulty. What I might do is plug this in, make sure nothing's shorting out, and see if that relay clicks in. Oh, it does click in. I don't know if you can see that, but the relay is actuating. So it's actually got around a 12,000 ohm coil in it, which is, I mean, it is across 240 volts, so you'd expect it to be high resistance, but not that high. But there you go. So the relay's operating. It's just the contacts in it are cooked. Well and truly cooked. They, down in these contacts here, it's very black. It's obviously got so hot. Yeah, there's like some sort of burnt carbon. And it's obviously got so hot it's even melted the melted the corner of the relay case there. It's a bit black in there, you can see, and actually melted and cracked. So that's gonna be our problem. Though I must admit I don't know why they actually bother to use that relay. What possible reason you would need to isolate the output? Two power points are connected together, parallel as you'd expect, but why you would need a relay to isolate the output so there's no circuit through that, that's a bit of an odd one really. There must be some safety reason to have that. That it's, yeah, if, if there's no power energising it, yeah, I'm not sure. I guess there's a possibility you could get some some way someone's hooked up extension cords or something and there's actually voltage coming back into this unit. That would have to be it. It would have to be, even though no one should have an extension cord with two plugs on it, it would have to be... But even then, if there's... Or it's to stop voltage coming back out of this plug... Because if the power points are live, they're going to stay live. If someone's plugged an extension cord into them and it's live, these are going to stay live even if the circuit breakers go. So it's not that. But it may be to protect, to make sure these pins can't become live. If something live, an external power source is plugged into this. That's the only thing I can think of is that there could be cords plugged into this that somehow... It must be, it must be the only re only reason you would have that. That relay is designed to protect a voltage from coming back out of this unit. If it was unplugged but has extension cords in it, I guess there's a possibility some tradie could unplug this and these pins could be live and they go, touch them and electrocute themselves. And of course the earth leakage, I don't think it will operate in reverse. So just to quickly get this unit going, Bit back, we can probably just bypass this neutral side of this relay just to prove a point. Get some smaller side cutters here. Yeah, I don't, don't know how you would get a voltage back through, but I guess it's something that someone's thought of at some stage as a possibility, or maybe it's happened in the real world. So they've made this device extra safe with this relay, but of course the relay's now failed, like most safety devices. They seem to be the most unreliable part of anything is it's any safety devices in it. Always happen with television sets, the uh, high voltage protection etc circuits would always fail even though they not not operate because it was a high voltage but just fail in themselves and shut everything down 
and it seems to be the same with just about everything else it's always the the safety components always seem to be the weak link that makes things unreliable so I'll just solder the neutral outlet to the neutral input I'll just put that back on there so that's a bit safer turn it on go to volts AC and we have 240 volts AC on the output so that's our problem I'll have to see if I can find a 240 volt coil relay for this and see if we can get this back operating safely again